Hi friends, I'm Sarah Martin with The Contour Chemist. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. Today we're talking eyeshadows. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately um, and I don't normally concentrate on eyeshadows over here. It's usually over on my Instagram and they're all saved in my highlight bubbles. So if you wanna go over there, check it out. But today I'm gonna go over just the basics. So say you are new to eyeshadow, intimidated by eyeshadow, don't know how to put a palette together, basic techniques. I'm gonna cover that today in a short and sweet one. So if you wanna check it out, keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if this video helps you. And thanks for being here. All right, guys, let's talk eyeshadow. So, disclaimer first, <laughs> eyeshadow is a personal preference thing, for sure. Um, whether how you like to wear it, um, how your eye is shaped, if you have hooded eyes, small eyes, large eyes, it really can determine how you like to wear your shadow. So that right out of the gate, I'm going to go over just the basics. Now this can be altered depending on how you like to wear your makeup, but um, I'll throw in a few tips and tricks on exact. So if you have eye, a smaller eye versus a hooded eye or whatever, I'll include that as well. But we're just going to mainly stick to some basic eyeshadow techniques. I've been asked a lot lately. I feel like you guys, especially over there on my Instagram, you love the simple, simple, basic eye looks. Nothing crazy, nothing complicated. And I think it's because people are very intimidated by eyeshadow. So I want to break it down, talk a little bit about how to choose a palette, what four main shades will make up what I consider a very versatile palette that can be used a variety of ways how you can kind of choose the colors you want, tools, techniques, the whatnot. So let's get right into it. Okay, if you are like me and have aging eyelids, primer, 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 do not skip a primer or you will get creasing. There's like, I, I have no way around it. I have to use a primer. There are two favorites for me, the Urban Decay Mer Urban Decay Mer Urban Decay Primer Potion. This is actually an anti-aging formula. It's a little pricier. I love the Thank Me Later. You can get it off Amazon. Um, I'll link them below. These two work identically for me. Um, so my first step in my routine always is to prime my eyes. I then use our creams, our highlight shades, my color corrector to pretty much cancel out all the veins in my eyelids because I have very purple eyelids. So I'll use my color corrector and then I'll use a little bit of my main shade over that to even out my lids. So I have a nice base. that's not going to change the color of any of my shadows I lay on top of it. And then I always, always, always set with a primer or set with a primer, set with a powder. Okay, so powder is really important, especially if you've put a cream on your lids like me with our foundation. I'll get creasing if I don't set it. Also, creams and powders don't mix, they'll stick. So as you're applying your shadow, if you just have creams on the lid, you're gonna get a horrible blend. You're not gonna get a nice seamless blend. So powder first so that you get that nice base and your eyes are prepped and ready to go. All right, so here we go. Let's talk eyeshadow shades. So when it comes to picking a palette, I know it can be overwhelming because I know mascara has, I think, 70 eyeshadows. Um, if you include our glitters and our creams and all the fun shades as well, but it doesn't have to be difficult. I like to put them in four categories. Okay, first, you're gonna have a highlight shade. This is usually shimmery. If you have mature eyes or you just do not want shimmers at all, I feel like a highlight shade you can use for mature eyes if you concentrate it here. 
and under the brow. You can still get away with shimmer because there's not a lot of texture on your eyes there. But I get it, I have mature eyes, I mind show texture. I feel like all matte looks actually increase the look of texture on my eyes. So I'm all for adding a little bit. You could always use a, one that's not quite so shimmery because some of ours are varying in degrees. I call them shimmers versus foiled. Some of mascara shades are very foiled looking on, on the skin when swatched. Some are a lot less shimmery, but will still give you that glow. Or you can simply use your illuminator for those areas and you'll be golden. So my first category is a shimmer. My second would be a mid-tone matte. And if you've watched my channel, you know, I swear by a great mid-tone matte that will go with anything. Doesn't mean it has to be brown, but I consider it a neutral shade. So that's two, mid-tone matte. This is the color you're going to place in your crease, above your crease, and carve out your eye. Now, some people like to use their contours or even Bella bronzer or Cayman bronzer, and you can utilize those in the same way as well. Number three is a shade for the lid. So that can be a fun shimmer or a matte. Um, it can be as bold or as neutral as you want, but this is where I incorporate my main shimmer shade um, that you can use a variety of ways, but a shimmer shade, something fun. I consider this the fun shade. <laughs> okay, and then for a deep dark shade. So a deep shade is gonna give you that versatility to whether you can use it as liner or you can increase the outer corner shadow that gives you that definition and kind of wings out your eye. It gives you more definition on your eye. Um, it's completely optional. Some people only wear that shade at night, or you can pick a less subtle option that is more daytime appropriate. Again, personal preference. So I'll show you some of the shades I have in my triple that I use on the daily, and I have them in those same categories. It makes it super easy to pick and choose um, which one I wanna wear that day. So in the top row, these are my highlight shades. And I switched out some of these because I put some in another compact. These are not my normal go-tos, but pretty much this is going to be the highlight color, okay? This is what's going to go, like I said, inner corner, brow bone, or you can pop it on the lid. This is what's going to hit the light, reflect, it's going to brighten your eyes and make them look larger. The highlight lifts the brow. I mean, the highlight is one of those things that really, I feel like is often overlooked as far as eyeshadow because it just seems like one extra step that can make the biggest difference in the way your eyes pop, which who doesn't want that, right? Okay, next is a mid-tone matte brown, okay? Um, doesn't have to be brown. Here's one, not brown. This is Lullaby, that first one was Sabrina. Um, this is Lullaby, okay? She's more of like a purple tone, mauve, great for hazel eyes. Um, she's not brown, but she's mid-tone matte neutral. I consider that a neutral, at least for me, totally neutral, okay? So that is the color you're going to put in your crease. Now, the reason we stick with mattes in that area is because that is the area, obviously, the crease, the most amount of texture on your eyelid is going to be there. That is my problem area by far, so I can't wear anything with shimmer. Shimmer reflects light, so the more shimmer you put on textured skin, the more it's going to look textured. So you stick with a matte there and put it slightly above your crease. If you're like me and have hooded eyes with that hood that comes down, okay? You put that slightly above your crease and then you're actually gonna be able to see the color. If you keep it in the crease, it's actually gonna close down your eye, make your eyes look smaller, more aged, okay? We don't want that. It actually will kind of disguise the hood when you bring it up over on top of that hood slightly 
because dark colors recede. This is why you don't want too light of a shade there. Um, if it just matches your eye skin tone, it's not going to give you definition. It's not going to recede that hood. If you have hooded eyes like me, you notice a huge difference when you maybe use a slightly darker shade. That is why. Okay. What's next? Here's the fun shade. So I like to stick with a shimmer. Um, here's one of my all time faves. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this a lot lately because I swear I layer it over everything. This is Tawanda. She's like a rose gold. This is where I feel like it's fun to throw in a bit of shimmer. I like to concentrate my shimmer to the lid. And the reason again is all about texture, especially when you have shimmer, going to increase that texture. And if I bring it too high, it's going to show texture. So it's just that keeping it on that lid is going to, the lid is much more flatter and it's not going to increase the look of that texture there, right? If you have mature skin and you feel like it just emphasizes everything, I feel like a lot of people can utilize a shimmer to a degree, maybe something, maybe not quite as shimmery as this one, um, that isn't quite so foiled. And I can give you suggestions on that, but, um, just a little bit of shimmer, even with mature skin looks amazing or pick a matte shade. I like to consider it a fun pop of color. It doesn't have to be a pop of color it can easily be a neutral, but something different than the shade on your crease because if they're too close, they're, they're, it's not going to give that definition and carve out your eye like you want it to. Okay. Also two darker shades on the lid will close down your eye as well. Make them look smaller. Um, so you don't want to go too dark unless you are going like full on glam, smoky eye look. Again, there's always a situation I feel like where rules don't apply or the basics. This is what I consider like basic daytime to night looks that are golden, obviously smoky eyes different. Um, there's different techniques depending on if you're just applying the same shade all over and the ombre and all those things I'll get into in a minute that can vary where you put the color on the lid. Obviously these can give you a lot of different looks depending on where you place them. But in general, I say a shimmer on the lid is a great go-to. Okay, then we're gonna get into a dark one. So this is my eye, my eyeliner right here, but I have a couple of different um, deep dark shades. Okay, these are the ones I stick to for my outer corner um, drama and my liner, um, even brow color. Okay, so that is good to have. Did I cover it all? Okay, so let's talk general techniques, okay? There's a few different techniques that I feel like everyone should have in their playbook. <laughs> so the first one is a wash. A wash is one of those that I feel like is everyday go-to when you don't wanna spend a lot of time on your eyes. Um, this can be anything from a light to mid-tone shade. Um, and it's as simple as using the eyeshadow everything brush, some kind of big fluffy brush, whatever you have. Okay. And simply taking one color all over the lid. Sometimes I simply just pick a nude color as a base and just simply pop it all over. Now, if you don't want to, I guess, um, prep your lids with a different color or even at your eyelids. Sometimes people just use a color such as this that matches their lids really well and evens out their lids that way. That was pup. That one is really light and works for me. Sometimes I just want to pick a color that's got a little bit of color or a lot of color and do the same thing. <laughs> Okay, so let's try, this is London, okay? This color can be dark depending on how much you use. I'm just gonna tap in, tap off excess and get the color right there on the end of the brush. Now this technique you're not using much, okay? You're just using a light hand and you're doing what we call the windshield wiper. So we're kind of pressing it on the lid 
and then right back and forth the windshield wiper. Now this shade is dark enough that it can give me some definition in my crease. I can use it really lightly like that. Just give me a little pop of color and I could totally be done with this look. Or I can build up the shade and use a little bit more. So say I just wanna add a little bit more definition in the outer corner and then in my crease. So notice my crease is right here. I'm going slightly above my crease so that you can see the color. So if you have hooded eyes like me and your eyes are open, you can't see the colors on your lids because your eyes are hooded and covering. You want to go slightly up and over onto the hood to then open up your eyes more. Can you see that? Okay. So this color I would consider more of a mid color. I like to also take my mid colors under the eyes. You will see me do this in every eye look. So that was the wash one color all over the lid. The next is a halo. Super simple. I usually say stick with a mid-tone color. A deep color often can look messy. I will occasionally add a little bit for a nighttime look, but you have to be very careful with how much you use under the eye so it doesn't look like just like you smudged your eyeliner everywhere and it doesn't look polished, okay? Too light of a color and you won't be able to see any definition. I use this because I don't like a harsh liner on the bottom of my lashes. It closes off my eyes and I have smaller eyes, so I'm always trying to make my eyes look larger, more awake, okay? So this gives me definition along my bottom lash line. And to be honest, I feel like it hides um, some of my wrinkles under my eyes. I don't know what it is, but when I don't do it, I swear my under eyes look older. So this is why I do it on the daily. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna use the other side of the eyeshadow everything brush because this one is more precise and it fits that lot, that area perfectly. Like I've never found a brush I like that does this in the same way. Okay, so it's a little harsh. Do you see that? I'm gonna flip it around and then I'm going to blend. Okay, I had a question the other day that people were saying, oh, I tried a halo, I don't know how many times, it just never looks right. So if you still don't think it looks right, you can use more than one shade. So what I would suggest is then, depending on the color, so this is a little bit purple, right? This is a purple shade. So if you are like, okay, that kind of looks like a purple, like I have a purple black eye, something like that, grab something a little bit more neutral. So I'd probably grab basic here and I'm just gonna add a little bit right over it. Sometimes I just use my finger to blend and suddenly it took away that harsh line right there and kind of still gave me definition. Okay, but it doesn't look like I have a black eye. Okay, and you might have to play with colors. You can even ombre the color using something that matches your um, skin tone more if you're finding the colors look too harsh, even those mid-tone range colors. So use something like Pup even, use that under there, okay? I also love this technique if you are one of those people that don't like to use powder under your eyes because you find it ages you, but, or if you are using mascara, a mascara for your eyelashes, and you're using mascara cream foundation, and you're finding that um, your mascara transfers below your eyes. And the reason for that is because obviously you're wearing a cream here. If you don't set under your eyes and you have a very creamy mascara on your lashes, um, it can transfer to that cream, okay? So I suggest trying a setting powder, very light-handed one, or using something as, a, as the halo technique. Um, this also helps really well if you have mascara on your bottom lashes and you're finding it's transferring to your under eye concealer foundation. Does that make sense? And that powder is almost working like a setting powder and it's causing that not to transfer. Okay, 
Okay, so now we've just used one color. We've gotten a little bit of definition, but for me, I like to kind of carve out my crease a little bit more and I don't really have any glow there. I'm gonna show you a couple of easy ways to add this, add to this look. So right now, we've only used one shade, okay? Eyeshadow Everything Brush, you can do almost, you could probably do your entire eye look besides eyeliner, unless you like a smoky, um, smudged out eye liner on your top, that is an amazing end for that but for a defined eyeliner, this won't do. But I usually recommend this brush for beginners because it can do so much. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little pop of highlight. Now, Sabrina, I feel like is universal for almost, almost anyone. Um, again, I'm just gonna use that small end, tap in there, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna highlight right there. I feel like this one does, does never translates to camera as much. There you go. Okay, inner tear duct is what opens the eye, brightens the eye. Um, if it's too extreme, just kind of blend it out. Depends on how bright you like it, but it makes the biggest difference in how your eyes pop. Same thing with goes under your brow. I use it because I want my brows to look lifted. It gives the appearance of a less hooded eye and makes you look younger. Who doesn't want that? So the key with brow highlight is you want to go to the top highest point of your arch to highlight. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to just kind of bring it down along the tail to blend it out. But if you highlight the entire area under your brow here, this right here is really textured for mature skin. You will actually cause the hood also it's going to increase texture it's going to make you look older if you have aging eyes and it's going to also make light go forward it's going to um, actually increase the look of your hood if you bring it down onto the hood okay this is why you want to keep it high tight right along the brow okay too much of an under eye for under, <laughs> under brow highlight is not a good thing for mature skin or hooded eyes. Just heads up on that. Also, if you're finding that the shade you picked is just increasing too much, try something with a little less shimmer. If you have Sabrina, you can always try Rome. That's a really good one. It has a little bit less shimmer. It's a little bit darker. Um, so that one works really well for mature skin as well. Okay, so we brightened, that is our highlight. We already used kind of a mid-tone shade as a wash, but we can easily add a mid-tone shade in our crease, or we can pop a that third shade, our shimmer shade, on our lids. So let's kind of do both. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with just, and you guys, I'm gonna use Twanda again, so I'm sorry you're coming over here from Instagram and you're like, seriously, you need to stop using that shade. It's one of my favorites because it changes the way this looks. So Tawanda is this pink one. It looks super pink and it looks super pink swatch, but can you see that it's just like, you put it on lightly, it just shows gold. You don't see any pink there. It's like rose gold shimmer. So I'm just gonna kind of tap in, tap off excess, and I'm just going to do that all over the lid. Now, this is a great way you can use shimmer in a really light way without it increasing too much texture. It's just going to kind of hit the light and it's just going to kind of give you a glow to the eyelids instead of like, boom, like foiled eyelids that will show every bit of texture. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's kind of how I use Tawanda. I layer that color over any other shade to change its look. So that's a really easy eye look. It would take you two seconds to just kind of pop on those two colors um, and you'd be good to go. Now, when I like to elevate my eye look a little bit more, I will carve out the crease more. So the general rule of thumb is that you can start with either your crease shade or the lightest shade. So sometimes you'll see 
I'll start with a lighter shade on the lid and then I'll do my crease shade. And the reason for that is when you start lightest to darkest, you will have a better blend. You never want to start with that number four color first. That if you start with the very darkest shade first, it's going to be really hard to get a good blend. So you can start lightest to darkest. That's the easiest way. Or you can go in with that crease color, kind of carve out the eye and then just kind of use another shade over the lid to make an easy look. Okay. So I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and just use Bubba. Okay. Bubba is one of my faves. It's warm, but I love warm. If you're scared of it, try basic. So I'm just going to kind of deepen my crease a little bit. It's just going to give me more definition. And if you're finding that you add a wash of color all over the lids and maybe you just aren't getting a good blend, try adding just a little bit of a darker shade right in the crease to kind of blur that edge and it's going to give you more definition. You see that it's subtle yet. I feel like it looks more finished. Okay. So that was a way of doing a, we simply did a wash. We did a halo. We added that pop of highlight and then we just did the windshield wiper technique again, but just right in the crease. So you followed a whole lot of techniques that you might have not known what the names were, but that was all in that one look. Now I'm going to do what I call, I call it outer corner definition. Some people call it a deep crease. Um, it's the pretty much is the general, how you get from a normal, I don't say normal, a day look. If you're going for a smoky eye, this is kind of the technique you're going to use. Now you can use this end of this brush. I find it a little bit harder for my eye shape. Some people love this. They kind of place the color with this end and then they kind of blend and blur with small circles with this end. When this brush was released, I didn't know how I'd use it or how much I'd love it, but it has been my favorite because it makes that outer corner so much easier for me. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and pick up, this is Philly and I'm going to use, there's two ends. One's more flat, one's more domed. I'm going to use that dome end right into Philly and I'm simply going to press it. It's called the blend and tap and you literally just have to tap it on. So all I'm going to do is close my eye and I'm going to find that outer corner V. Okay. Pretty much if you have trouble finding like where your shadow should start and stop, grab a pencil from your nostril to the corner of your eye to the tip of your brow. That is where you should stop your eyeshadow. So when I close my eyes, I have that imaginary line going right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As I flip my brush, guys, it's okay. Cause I'm wearing cream makeup. <laughs> Creams are amazing. There are no mistakes, right? Okay, so as I was saying, I'm gonna look at that imaginary line and I'm gonna just start tapping right on that outer corner. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of move into the crease slightly. So here I actually tap, do you see how I'm tapping in kind of a little bitty V into the crease, just a little back down to the outer corner towards my lash line. That is my V. Now I just keep tapping. Like no joke, this brush is so easy because once I start tap, stop tapping, I don't have to blend because it blends as you tap. So there you go. If you feel like it's still a little too harsh for you, flip it around, use the other end, and then just kind of press and feather along the edge of where you just applied that. Okay, you can then also kind of drag it a little bit more into the crease. That's what we call a deep crease. But this is the general motion for 
um, building up to a smoky eye. Okay, you would then just keep adding color until it's as smoky as you want. And then you'd bring that down along the lower lash line and you've got a smoky eye. Smoky eyes don't have to be scary. They're us usually just using darker shades to give it that drama. But honestly, you can add that outer corner color in any shade you want. I've done bright purple, green, anything. It can add a pop of color or it can just add a little bit of definition. Do you notice how much larger this eye looks than this with nothing on it, okay? And that is because my, the way my eyes are shaped, I like to elongate them this way because if you see, my eye actually stops right here. I look like I have a lot of space here. Here, it's made my eyes look bigger, more almond shaped, it's kind of like look I like, and I don't even have any liner on yet. And liner will kind of emphasize that even more, but there you go, that's how you can do that. I do always recommend if you add an outer corner color to just bring a touch of that corner down a little bit, because otherwise I feel like if you have a gap to where it's not kind of brought down to that lower lash line, um, it doesn't look complete. Okay, so there you go. We got the outer corner color shade. We've pretty much done them all. I'm going to show you the same colors. Let's do the same colors, different technique on this eye and how you can kind of do a different look, different um, method. How about a different order? Okay, let's try it. So I used Bubba in my crease on this side. Now I'm gonna start with Bubba in my crease on this side, okay? Eyeshadow everything brush. Okay, I'm gonna take that and I'm going to carve out my crease. I'm gonna take that color, kind of make me a guideline for how far over I need to go. So draw a line, it's fine, we'll blend it out. Pick up a little bit more product and then start pressing and then windshield wiper in small circles to blend, okay? Now, if you're having trouble with this step first or you feel like you're not getting a good blend, use a base shade like that pup all over the lid first, then you can kind of add this color. Starting with those lighter shades will give you a better blend when you're new. I pretty much have a base of the setting powder on my lids, which is why I, I get a pretty good blend. Okay, now when it comes to eyeshadow, I'm a huge proponent of slowly building up color. If you start going in like this and go straight to the lid, first of all, all that, I don't know if you can see that, is gonna fall underneath your eye, okay? The more you start with, the harder it's to blend because exactly where you touch your eye with that brush, it's gonna deposit the most amount of color. Anything that isn't deposited is gonna fall. Um, if you gently tap in, tap off excess, and slowly build, you're gonna get a better blend. You're not gonna get any fallout, and you're not gonna get any one area of your eye with more color than the others. Hopefully that makes sense. Then you can just stop when you feel like it's enough, okay? You can always go back and add later once you've added more to, to help blend again if you're finding you have a harsh edge where you applied on your lid, anything like that. So what other colors did we use? We used London, I'm gonna forget guys, Tawanda, <laughs> Sabrina, Philly. I'm gonna pull them out so I don't forget and forget to utilize one. All right, I've got my shades here. We've already used Bubba. Actually, no, I'm gonna pull out Bubba. I forgot to use it completely. Okay, here's our shades. Uh, Mid-tone matte, the same color I use to windshield wiper, crease color, I always put under my eyes to halo. So, Bubba. Bubba, if you don't know, is my everyday go-to, especially under the eyes. I think I used 
basic too on this side, didn't I? A little bit under the eye. So I'll show you. I'll try to make them a little even. A little bit of basic. Basic and Bubba are very similar. This one's just a little bit warmer. Basic is neutral. I kind of use them both every day on the daily, interchangeably. Okay, okay. So for this eye, I'm going to use Tawanda as my lid color, okay? And this time, I don't wanna do a wash just for a gold. I'm going to actually want more pigment, okay? When you want something pigmented or more shimmery, the multitasker, by far, this end of the brush will press on color unlike any other. Okay, just gonna press on, tap off excess. Now I'm going to just simply press that color on all over my lid. Just the lid stopping at the crease. You see the difference? Now it doesn't look super pink, it looks a little bit pink but it still is giving that gold. If you want even more pigmentation, like you want that one foiled, then use a stay spray, wet your brush a little, then press it on, makes a world of difference. It gives even more pigmentation. Okay, so I'm gonna take that Sabrina color and the multitasker brush, and I'm gonna still put it on that tear duct, but this time I'm going to bring it onto the lid as well. Now this is a great technique to just kind of still concentrate it on that inner corner, but to make your eyes look bigger. See how much it like opens up the eye? Um, so my general rule of thumb is like a third, a third of the eye, it's going to brighten, make your eyes look bigger, all that good stuff. Okay, so we've got our fun shimmer. So we've got number one, two, and three so far. Now we're gonna do that outer corner color. Now, before we used London, kind of as a mid-tone shade all over the lid, I wanna show you how you can also use this color for the outer corner, kind of give it more of a daytime, still get that effect of that kind of elongation kind of um, here, but with a lighter color. It does not have to be super deep, but I can still get that effect and it can add in those purple tones which could be a nice um smoky look as well so this is like more daytime smoky i'm not gonna apply as much as i did over here i'm just gonna add a little bit of that london outer corner and blend and then i'm just gonna take like i said a touch on that outer corner under my eye Okay, and I feel like I need help blending. So I feel like the eyeshadow everything brush is always my favorite blending tool. Another really great tip is that if you're wearing mascaras, cream makeup, grab your brush you use to apply your highlight. Um, so I did my under eyes with this brush. I tend to just kind of always keep that handy, not applying any more highlight, just simply pressing along that imaginary line there will blur that edge. If you get too far down, you can easily swipe it up. You can add more of that brightener shade there, but it gives you a really nice blend. If you get a little crazy with your eyeshadow, um, it's a great tip as well. So we've kind of used all the same shades here, except for that, that very last darkest one. And this time I'm just gonna use it as a liner. So. I love our angled brushes. They come with this spoolie on the end. Um, and this is Philly. I normally usually line my eyes with Trust or Coal, but this is a great dark shade as well. Um, so I'm gonna show you, just simply tap in, if I can see. And then you just kind of press that brush along the lash line, putting the larger point away from you, if that makes sense. Okay, it kind of conforms to your eye and gives you that definition. You can use it on the lower lash line as well. I tend to just kind of gently do 
my lower lash line, but you can see it adds that definition. You had the darker shade down here, which gave more definition there. Now I have it along my lash line. And of course, anywhere you wanna blend, blur. Sometimes I always like to take one last look and my eyeshadow everything brush, my trick is always having two. <laughs> and that's because one I apply with, one stays clean, and one is my blending brush. So you take your clean brush and you always have a clean brush to kind of blur edges and give yourself one nice long blend when you're done. So I kind of cheated. I think we kind of used five shades on this eye both of them, um, because we kind of layered a few over here. But I hope you guys got the general idea of kind of where to place colors, different ways to use different tones, depending on what's in your palette on different areas of the eye to create different looks using the what tools for what, and a few new different application methods. Don't be scared with eyeshadow. It washes off. If you are terrified of it, you know, start with some lighter shades. You can and you can increase the darkness um, as you go. If you have questions over eyeshadows you have or how to put together a palette, you know, stick with that one, two, three, four rule. Okay, so I'm gonna recap real quick. A highlight shade, so something light and shimmery, and then a mid-tone matte neutral for the crease, a fun shimmer or a pop of color. Um, and then a deep dark shade to add that drama or definition or line the eyes. If you have those four colors in your palette, um, you can easily add a couple in each category and have a multitude of looks and different ways to apply to get the look you want and have fun playing with it. It's makeup, it washes off. There's, there's nothing but just things that you're gonna discover and learn and you're gonna have so much fun playing with it if you just give it a try. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, as always, um, comment below. Or if you need a color match for mascara or eyeshadows or anything, you can email me directly for um, eyeshadow suggestions or my color match questionnaire is also in the drop box below. And I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks again for being here, guys. Love you. Bye.